Today I'm going to have a go at making fake honey from flowers and sugar. Now before we go any further, I am already aware that bees have invented the process of making flowers into honey, but I fancied having a go at faking it today. So I have two types of flowers here. I've got creeping thistle and meadow sweet. Creeping thistle smells very, very strongly of honey. Now that might seem like a weird thing to say. Of course, honey smells of flowers, but not all flowers smell of honey. So creeping thistles are very, very common wildflower around where I live. And when you walk past a stand of creeping thistles, you can smell honey. Meadowsweet is a plant that grows in marshy places and riversides. So I went out to the River Itchen, which is a lovely crystal clear chalk stream, teeming with wildlife, and picked myself some meadowsweet. Now the interesting thing about meadowsweet is one of the common names for this is meadwort. And that may refer to meadows. The old word for meadow was mead but it may refer to honey. There seems to be some debate about that. These have a sort of vanilla, honey, almost almond smell to them. So we're gonna make two different batches of fake honey today from these two flowers. So to start off, I'm just gonna snip the flowers from this meadow sweet into a cup. I'm trying to get as little stalk as I can really, because it's all about the flowers. I have already shaken the bugs off for this one. The creeping thistle flowers I will take outside and kind of winnow them in a colander, which will enable, hopefully, all of the insects that are currently living on them to escape. Meadow sweet's a bit easier because it's on stalks, so you can just give it a good shake, which I did when I picked it. Now I've made things with meadow sweet before and it's a very strongly flavoured plant. When it's prepared in an infusion, it's got a strong flavour that's kind of like a blend of honey and vanilla and almonds. And then these creeping thistle flowers. Hmm. Well, I was going to cut off the green parts here, but smelling these bits on their own, they do have some scent to them. So actually, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to infuse the whole lot. For better or worse, it's not going to be boiled or anything like that. It's just going to be steeped in hot water. So I've got the two cups of flowers here and they both smell amazing, but interestingly, both slightly different. So I'm just going to pour boiling water on both of them just to cover the flowers. I want to make a fairly strong infusion here because I don't want to dilute the sugar syrup that I have to make later. So I'm just going to leave those to steep. Okay, time to make the sugar syrup now. And there's a slight problem here, and that is that this sugar I'm using is sucrose. And honey is normally mostly fructose. So we're going to invert this sugar, which means basically boil it down with an acid, which breaks down the sucrose into fructose and glucose. So we do that by cooking it with an acid. You can use citric acid, you can use cream of tartar. I'm going to use lemon juice which obviously contains a lot of citric acid and probably ascorbic acid as well. So, so I've got 500 grams of sugar and to that I'm going to add 250 grams of liquid. You won't taste the lemon juice really significantly in the finished sugar syrup. I suppose it's there, but it's so much sweetness in the end product that I doubt the lemon will have any flavor at all against that. Right, and then up to 750 grams, so half the weight of water to sugar. So now the really kind of tricky part, which is to cook it without burning it. So I've got a gas cooker, which is not ideal for this. It's better, if you can, to use electric, just because I think the heat around the sides of the pan can induce caramelization, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna go really gentle with this. So first thing to do is just heat it gently and dissolve that sugar into the liquid. And also the thing to do here is wet down the sides of the pan with water, just clear water, just so we don't get any sugar crystals on the edge of the pan, apparently, because again, that can induce caramelization. So if there's any sugar on the side of the pan, we just wash it down. Right, that's dissolved. I'm gonna try not to stir that anymore now. And what will be happening here with the heat is that acid is breaking the sucrose into fructose and glucose. 
And I do need to be super careful here because sugar syrup can boil well above the boiling point of water. So sticking my hand in here would be a bad move right now. I'm going to move this to a smaller burner at the back because then I, the heat will be right underneath the pan. So already we we're, were able to boil this above the normal boiling point of water and that's because of that sugar in the mix. Okay, so that's simmering away nicely now and I will just continue washing down those sides if they need it, if there's any kind of froth or crystals on the sides there. We've got to simmer that now until it's boiling at 114 degrees Celsius. And you can see it's already starting to yellow a little bit. It will caramelize a little bit, but I'm hoping it won't go too dark. So while that sugar's cooking away, I'm just going to strain these flour mixtures now. So this is the meadow sweet infusion. And this is the creeping thistle infusion, which sadly has lost its color. I, I hoped we might have been able to make blue honey, but apparently not. Both of those are kind of honey color ish though, aren't they? Thistle one smells very vegetal. The meadow sweet one does too, but it's all in the flavor. I think we've got a, there's obviously no sugar at all in that. Right, we're getting quite close, I think now. Let's just measure the temperature of this boiling sugar. We've lost quite a lot of liquid, but that's what I was aiming for. We are very, very nearly there now. There we go, 114. That's now boiling at 114 degrees Celsius time to turn off the heat. So that should now be inverted sugar syrup. It's taken on a little bit of a golden colour which is good because we want it to look a bit like honey. So I'm going to divide that into two batches but I really don't want to do that while it's boiling boiling hot because it's really dangerous to handle right now. Right now we're going to divide this sugar syrup in half and make two batches one with each type of flour. So to divide it in half, I'm going to pour it first all into this other pan here and weigh it. So we've got 644 grams. So I need to return 322 grams to that pan. Close enough. So now I've got two equal amounts of invert sugar syrup here. And I'm going to add 100 grams of the thistle water into that one which interestingly changed colour. I presume that's the residual acidity from the lemon juice. And into this one, 100 grams of meadwort water. Then both of these need to go back on the boil until they get back to 114. So if you're new to this channel, you might be asking why? Why do this? Why make fake honey? And there are a variety of reasons why you might want to do this. Some people are allergic to honey. Some people have an objection to the idea of keeping bees in captivity. Some people want to make fake honey to sell it and adulterate real honey. My reasons, none of those. It's just I'm curious about this. I smelt some flowers that smelt like honey and I was curious to know if I can make something that tastes like honey out of them. It's really as simple as that. Now as I'm boiling away here, I've got my flower infusions in here and I am boiling away some of the aromas. That's inevitable, but I don't really know any other way of doing that. We're just going to have to be hopeful that we don't have to boil it for so long that we boil away all of the character of those flowers that I added. Interestingly, we've got two very different colours. We've got a kind of golden amber colour over here and we've got a yellowish honey colour over here. Now I should say, if you're thinking of trying this yourself, you must make sure that the flowers you use are edible. A lot of people use dandelions and that's the more common one. They're not available at this time of year, which is why I'm using these two flowers. There are flowers though that are poisonous but still smell really nice. For example, Budlia. I've often thought that Budlia smells very strongly of honey, but I happen to know that the plant is toxic, so I'm not going to try using the flowers from there. It's not a problem for the bees that take the nectar, because nectar is usually just fairly pure sugar syrup. But if I was to steep those Budlia flowers in water, I'd be removing some of the sap as well, and potentially getting some toxic chemicals into my brew. And of course I've done my research, so I know that Creeping Thistle and Meadow Sweet are safe to eat. Right, I think that back one is going to get there before the front one. Let's just check that. 113 and a half, 114. Let's just check it's like that everywhere. Yep, so that back one's going to turn off now. 114 Celsius at the back there is good. 
Okay, so just the front one now. The rising temperature of this sugar solution is mainly to do with the concentration going up as water it leaves the solution. So as it becomes more and more concentrated, the boiling point rises. We've just hit 114, so I'm going to stop there. Okay, so there we go, my two fake honeys. We've got thistle on the right and meadowsweet on the left. I'm going to leave those to cool down now because they're still scalding hot. We'll let them cool down not completely because they will go thick but we'll let them cool down so they're not going to crack the jars when we pour it in. This has been cooling down for about half an hour now and I'm going to put it in the jars. I don't think it's going to fill up these jars but that's not a problem. The reason I waited this long to pour it out is because even like 10 minutes after I turned the heat off the temperature of this sugar syrup was still well above the boiling point of water which not only makes it quite dangerous to handle but also means that if there was a tiny bit of water inside these jars it would very likely flash to steam when I poured in the hot syrup which could be dangerous. So this is cooled down to about 60 degrees Celsius now which is cool enough that I don't need to worry about shattering the jars or anything like that and I'm just going to put the lids on those and then let them cool completely. I'm expecting that that will thicken quite a lot as it cools. Okay, it's the following morning. So we've got our two fake honeys here, Creeping Thistle and Meadowsweet. And we're going to do a taste test. And I think alongside this, we're going to try some real honey and golden syrup. Golden syrup is like a sugar syrup that's popular in the UK for baking and cooking. But some people like it on pancakes or on toasted muffins or on crumpets and things like that. To taste this, we're going to have some toasted muffins and I've got this unpasteurized French salted butter, which is really delicious. So let's get these muffins forked and toasted. Jenny's going to join me in the tasting. I'm not entirely sure it's a good idea to subject her to this because I think these are going to be a bit weird. Okay, right, some toasted buttered muffins, toasted to a variety of different degrees for whatever you fancy. I think it's probably the first thing to do is just to taste these on their own first so we can get an impression of what they actually taste like in relation to memories of honey. So this is Creeping Thistle. Okay. So it kind of looks like honey. It's a little bit thinner, I would say, than regular honey. So here goes. Kind of sweet, slightly acidic. You can tell it's got something in there that's not just sugar, can't you? Yeah, you can. But I wouldn't say it really tastes of honey. Almost there, but not. Yeah. Reset the palate with a glug of tea. Yeah, there's something in there that's a kind of weird vegetable flavour. Okay. And now the meadow sweet. Different colour, this one slightly less red, more golden. The same thickness. I yeah, I think it, I think I could have boiled it a bit further for the thickness. That one's hmm, more fruity. Yeah, more tangy. More hmm. Something. Still not getting any of the flowers in it at all. I wouldn't know what the flowers really no. tasted like. Mm. Really. Okay, so time to try it on a toasted muffin, I think. So I'm going to, I think what I'll do is cut one in half, because I'm, I'm probably not going to want a whole muffin of each of these. That one I would say is stronger. Yeah. Stronger flavour. Of the two, so meadowsweet or, or Medis creeping thistle. Sweet, I think. You prefer it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try the creeping thistle on toast first and then I'll try the, the other one so that's meadow sweet no sorry that's yeah. creeping thistle you can try the other one if you it's up to you whatever you want to do so it's creeping the same thing, yeah it? yeah I think so okay so creeping thistle so you can see it's kind of running like honey but it's it is thinner it's like warm honey the texture isn't it yeah okay so on toast with butter So 
you think? It's doable. Mm. It's not honey, is it? It's, no. It's, it soaks through. Yeah. I just don't think it's got the the kind of floral nose that you get with honey, has it? It's not got the aroma. No. And I think that's really just because I had to boil it to get it back down to concentration and I think I boiled away all of the aromatics from the flowers. Okay, so this is the Meadowsweet one, which Meadowsweet, um, when I've made things with it before, it was a powerful flavour. I think that one's a little bit closer to honey, isn't it? Mm, it is, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think probably if somebody gave me that on toast you and said it's it. honey, yeah, I'd probably say, say, oh, okay. Mm. I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd say, wow, that's nice honey. But I think I, will, I might accept it if somebody told me that's mm. honey. It's definitely the better of the two. Yeah. So the thing now is to try real honey. And I think that will put it into perspective a little bit. Okay, so real honey. And interestingly, this is quite a runny one. Yeah, I'd say that's almost as runny, isn't it? Yeah. It's not dripping off the toast though, so it's it's not as runny. That's quite a mild flavoured honey, I would say. Mm. Actually, it's not intensely floral or intensely musky like sometimes anything, honey is. That one has got more flavour than this. Yeah, this is this is a, a very light, mild honey. Okay, and I'm just really for the sake of completeness, golden syrup because. It is a thing that people sometimes use as a honey substitute. We're having sugar for breakfast. Mm. <laughs> well, of all the things on table, that's the one with the most flavour, isn't it? Wouldn't you say? What, the honey? Yeah, what, the golden, golden syrup. syrup. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That, right? That's quite nice, that one. Mm. Okay. So, I think we ought to rank these now. So. I think we'll ignore the golden syrup because it just isn't honey. No. Okay. So, but of the three things that are supposedly honey, favourite? I quite like the meadow sweet myself. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I think real honey after that. Yeah. And the creeping thistle one, yeah. I, I just, just don't, don't think that's quite worked. No. It's got an odd vegetable flavour in mm. it. I think really if we wanted to get the real aroma of those flowers in there, like you sometimes get with different honeys, because th that is a very mild tasting honey f for my mm. palate. I think if we wanted to get the flower aromas into those things, I don't think boiling them after the adding the flowers is the right thing to do. I think probably almost like a perfumery process where you get distill out the, the flower and then add it as, a, as an essence right at the end. Yes. Might do the trick, I don't know. Of those, which one would um, I mean? So you think that? Uh, let's, I like the meadow. Okay, sweet, I'm going to go yeah. back for a bit more of the meadow sweet then, <clears throat> and give it a, another taste as the favourite. But I think I've I mean I've, I've had honey that's better than that because I've had honey that's better than this. This is a really mild, neutral honey. Well, so that was interesting. I would say not entirely a success, but I think we've made something that's almost on a par with. A very light, mild flavoured honey. What we haven't done is really make something that is that preserves the aroma of those wild flowers, which is what I was hoping to do. So more experimentation required, I think, but I'm not really sure how to proceed with that. I think that might have to wait for a, a future laboratory setup where I've got some perfumery distillation equipment. So Jenny's going to have some more of the so that's nice enough for you to want more then, is it? Yeah, that one. Yeah, good. It's a shame it's so runny. <clears throat> yeah, I think if I boiled it, <laughs> if I boiled it more, it would have gone really dark and it probably mm. would have acquired a caramel taste. Mm, probably. It's almost got the honey flavour in mm. it. For me, I do want honey to taste really of honey. And for that reason, that's, I, I would say this is even a bit mild yeah, for me, really. Yeah, it is very mild. I like honey to taste of the beehive. So I think there is more experimentation to be done here, but I think boiling the sugar syrup after adding the flowers just destroys the floral aroma. So I think probably if we were going to do that again, we need to use a different process to get those flowers into the syrup. 
I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.